Can I have a little short of time so I can get you as quickly as possible? Deborah and, and Kaz from Big Sur. The first of uh, some perspectives from uh, various law sites, and so we can hear about the topic. talking in the first part of our presentation about a project being undertaken in the Barwon trial site in Victoria, specifically on mental health, and that project is being undertaken by BigServe. BigServe is the peak body for community managed mental health services in Victoria, and as a result has worked really closely with key stakeholders, service providers, as the trial has rolled out. The Barwon trial in Victoria is unique, and it's unique in that the comprehensive mental health system that currently exists, which has state-funded, community-managed recovery mental health services, are no longer envisaged to be funded in this trial. So what actually happens in the Victorian trial, um, and what will happen, is that that funding will be withdrawn. So a whole section of the service system um, is essentially missing and what is left is what is available for those who are eligible for the NDIS. So service providers and VicServe have identified a range of issues that have been coming up and we've heard, certainly heard some of those um, you know, fairly comprehensively this morning. So the state government has funded VicServe to have a look at what actually is happening in the Barwon trial site um, in relation to mental health. VicServe consulted with uh, service providers and key stakeholders to get a sense of really what people wanted from this project, what was going to be useful, what was really going to help the learn and build model so that the trial site in Barwon can really add some value into um, the learn and build experience. So there were four really uh, key issues that came out, very high synergy between um, the stakeholders about what they thought was necessary. The first one was really, a lot of people wanted to know what is going on is in Barwon. What is consumers' experience? What are carers, what are families, what are service providers saying? What's actually happening down there? Because there is a bit of a sense from, from people not in trial sites that they really don't have much idea of what actually is being experienced. The second big issue that people really wanted to know about is tell us about the data. Who's eligible? Who's ineligible? What makes someone <coughs> eligible? What makes someone ineligible? What are the numbers telling us? Um, and that really is a critical factor, I think, for people in Barwon, but also for the broader um, mental health community. As we've heard a lot of, people really want to have some analysis and commentary on the language in the scheme design. Permanency, disability, functional impairment, uh, the clusters, the pricing. So there are a lot of things in scheme design that um, people not only want to understand, uh, but they really want to see how is that playing out in Barwon. And finally, because of the uniqueness of the model in Victoria, um, where essentially the plan is to take out that really important chunk of community recovery services, what will actually be the impact on consumers and the system? And that's something that we obviously get to yet to understand. So it's certainly hope that this project, which is really at the moment in its infancy, will help um, us all get a better understanding of how this model is actually rolling out and hopefully strongly influence both the state um, and the national office of the NDIS. So in terms of some of the high level issues, I thought I was going to be telling you something new. But what I'm going to be saying is, has already been certainly talked about in the previous presentation. But the biggest issue and the key issue that consistently comes out 
um, when we're talking to the range of people in Barwon is around scheme design. So it's around the, the issues of the language, the language that we're taking mental health service provision that you know consumers, carers, families, service providers uh, you know, are proud of the work that is done, the relationships that are built, and what is able to be achieved from a recovery-based framework. And the fact that people feel that they're going back to the disability permanent language, um, I think has been very well described again in the previous um, presentation, but the language is very much seen as harmful and demeaning. And the, the strong view of all stakeholders that we are, in an unintended way, increasing stigma when the whole rest of, really, the mental health system and society is really trying to reduce stigma. It's so important, and yet um, what we're seeing in Barwon is the opposite. Services are reporting the same things. Um, but I think a really big issue, and again it was touched on in the previous presentation, is that for people to go through the eligibility process and then through the assessment process takes a lot of support and advocacy from their key worker. Now in an NDEIS model, this is in what's called an unbillable hour because the person's not in yet. So in terms of thinking about the rollout, this is something that's very important. But in terms of thinking about the impact on consumers, it is not easy. So for example, in Geelong, we do know that GPs, for example, where a lot of people um, have received their sort of clinical maintenance services, they didn't really even know about the NDIS. They didn't really understand the eligibility forms or the importance that this person got the form filled out in a timely manner because if they didn't, they potentially wouldn't be able to get any service. So there are very significant issues around supporting people and as has been pointed out, advocacy to really assist people to get through that process. There are a number of services who say that they've had clients who have withdrawn because the stress of the process um, was something they just couldn't deal with. And at the end of the day, it really was affecting people's mental health. The early data that um, we're putting together from the agencies is indicating that at this point, we've got 50 to 60% of people who were receiving services under community mental health um, having NDIA eligible plans. So we've therefore got 40 to 50 percent of people who have no approved plan, and that might be for a number of reasons. They may be ineligible, they may have withdrawn, they may be phasing the crime. But again, thinking for the Barwon trial, where those state government <coughs> services are being withdrawn, that's a lot of people who won't necessarily have access to support at some point in the future. Another issue that's come up and that's really critical and that has also been touched upon earlier is the issue for young people. And when I say young people, I mean people under 50, oh, sorry, I mean 30. Um, <laughs> for young people, there is no access. So for someone under 30, does anybody really want to talk about anyone having a permanent disability in this context, but particularly for that group? So again, in the, in, in the Barwon trial, there aren't really many or any options for that growth. Where is the uh, capacity, I guess, has been asked around early intervention? I mean, that's one group that the uh, insurance scheme, you know, could really be getting some benefit from having some really um, quite specific clusters that might assist that group to move out of the NDIS. You know, a good recovery service that's working uh, well with someone should be moving, you know, people through into the three years. So, you know, there are some real opportunities here. Um, and we've heard a lot of the negatives, but there are some real opportunities here for some positive work to be done and some positive thinking to be done in some of these categories. The other issue that, that's come through loud and clear is the issues for families and carers. There are no clusters, there is no capacity for support. 
and in the context of the mental health system that um, in Victoria we currently work in, that's such a critical, a really critical point. So again, we would really um, be urging those assigned with the task of thinking about scheme design and what works for people, um, that this is a really critical point. The other issue vying for the thing most commonly raised and the, one of the greatest issues that people have raised in Barwon is the clusters and pricing. So there is no mental health cluster and I know that, that we have heard Eddie and other people say that that is being talked about but at the moment there are no options for a mental health cluster. There, there are some line items clearly that might be recreation or community support or whatever but they're not recovery focused mental health specific clusters that enable people to get similar support to what they might be getting now. And again, given in Victoria, we know that that will not be there soon. The price is clearly an issue. Um, we think, and it has been you know, raised again by people uh, very consistently, that it's really important that people have access to qualified community mental health workers. But the price at the moment with the clusters doesn't enable that. So we're, we're seeing some real um, issues of risk and quality around the pricing and clusters and really uh, look forward to having the opportunity to, to have some further dialogue and, and input as those things are considered. And again, I think as has been really well drawn out, in Barwon we really run the risk of putting mental health services back 10 to 15 years um, because they're just, you know, the recovery, rehabilitation services that the community sector has traditionally provided won't be there. Um, and the NDIS at the moment doesn't have the capacity to replace that. <coughs> so the unintended impacts of which um, we've touched on some, and I, I think these are, it's really important to emphasise these, that consumers are actually withdrawing because the scheme is seen as demeaning and stressful. And it's really leaving them um, with no access to services. And those increased feelings of stigma is certainly something that I think we really need to try and find a way of dealing with. Consumers with limited funding hours because of their packages, who are used to being able to bring their key support worker for formal, and most importantly, the informal support that they might need at particular times, unable to do that because their hours in the package for the week or the month have run out. And potentially this, the dismantling of the community managed recovery mental health service system in Barwon um, is a real risk and with that the potential for market failure. So I think the project, whilst in its early phases is giving us some very important information and over the next few months the project will release um, about five papers which will start to to raise the issues to look at the trends and to hopefully come up with some you know realistic options that might be able to assist and improve because uh, as has been pointed out I haven't got a squadron of planes, but there is a plane, it is flying, there are real people in that plane, and at the moment, the way the NDIS is um, set up, and we know it's a trial, but it is a trial with real people, it's just not yet fit for purpose for really providing um, quality and effective services to people living with mental illness in Darwin. So I'd now just like to hand over to Deb. Um, thanks to Kaz, who's doing a fantastic job in um, being present in, in Barwon, talking to lots and lots of people, providers, consumers and carers, um, department staff and um, people at NDIA, um, to really be able to draw a picture of what is happening in Barwon. And I'm here, I guess, to, um, to talk about not so much 
NDIS itself. We've heard a lot about NDIS <laughs> and what the issues are in NDIS. My, um, my um, presentation is really looking at the bigger picture of what is happening in Victoria. And in some ways, I feel like I can sit down and just say what Rob said, um, what David Melbourne said this morning, yes. Yes, yes, and I can't stress highly enough, yes. Um, on the other hand, I could put up a sign saying, warning, warning, do not take this path, you do so at your own peril. Because really what is happening in Victoria, in the Barwon um, site, is a microcosm of what the pathway for Victoria into the future is going to look like. Um, what, um, we had a forum a few weeks ago and someone pointed out that in Victoria we have only 300, well then it was 400 working days to the implementation of NDIS across the state, to the commencement of that happening. It's now at 387 days and really that is not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time to get ready, it's not a lot of time for a lot of the answers that have been, a lot of the questions that have been raised this morning are answered and it's not a lot of time to really address the big picture issues that are occurring in Victoria. We're really concerned about um, the speed that the trial is, um, is or that the NDIS is moving at. In Victoria, we are galloping full steam ahead to the implementation of NDIS, and we're galloping towards a reality that does look like Barwon. I guess we could say that either Victoria is fortunate or foolhardy, depending on how you want to look at the situation. It's true that the Victorian government has committed almost all of the PDRSS funds into um, NDIS, um, and that's, uh, that's the case currently in Barwon, and it has been the government's stated intent that that is what it will do um, in the future as the NDIS uh, um, begins to roll out. I guess this puts us in the unenviable position of absolutely testing what NDIS will and what it won't provide. We are testing NDIS to say what is it that you will do for people with mental health, what won't you do for people with mental health. And at the moment we are finding that, and, and I think we all knew this, and many people have already stated, that NDIS is not a replacement for, for those essential community managed mental health services that have a recovery orientation. And we're, we're finding that out the hard way. The people in Barwon are finding that out the hard way. Over the last 12 months, the Victorian Government has also been undertaking um, a reform of mental health across the rest of the state. It has introduced a new framework, which is called the Mental Health Community Support Services um, Framework. And under this framework, the NDIS eligibility criteria has been introduced and is being applied. And there also, um, there has been a move to a more individualised um, approach to delivery of packages. The government's stated intention was to help prepare services and consumers for the transition to NDIS. So we're in a process of transition to a new framework and ultimately to a transition to the delivery to the implementation of NDIS. As a result of the new framework, we are already seeing people missing out on essential recovery oriented supports and we anticipate that this will mean there will be increased demand <coughs> on hospitals and clinical services. And really what um, the Barwon experience is showing us is that there is a huge emerging gap um, being identified between NDIS and current um, clinical and hospital based services. In fact, one of our colleagues down in Barwon described it not as a gap, but as a sinkhole. And I guess what part of the work that we're doing is actually plumbing the extent of that gap or that hole that is emerging. But the, the really, I guess for us, the, um, the real issue that for Victoria is now not so much 
it is, of course, very important to be able to identify what is NDIS, what does it provide, what is Tier 2 about. But I think for us now, the ongoing issue is going to be what will our community mental health system look like once NDIS arrives? And really, we have no answers for that at the moment. We do feel, though, that the questions won't be so much focusing on what does NDIS provide, what doesn't it provide, but for the rest of the community sector, and really all those sectors that are associated with mental health, the real issues are going to be around quality and risk. We anticipate that there is going to be really significant impacts on quality of service delivery, and this is both within NDIS but also within the broader mental health sector. There's going to be a loss of high quality contemporary mental health support in Victoria. That, that high quality system that was a benchmark really until quite recently is currently being undermined, it is being dismantled. I really don't want us to be in a situation of being a benchmark for how low we can go in the delivery of mental health. There is real risk about the, or the, what we're really concerned about is the loss of skilled workforce. That's also going to impact on quality. ANDIS is showing that through its, and if, if the issues around pricing and the, um, the clusters is not resolved, we are going to lose that skilled workforce that has been built up over decades. And we see that the pathways for care are being undermined. We've got now a break in that pathway of care through that continuum of service. We're anticipating that there are going to be real risks for providers and consumers. And in particular, the questions that are arising for us is where does responsibility lie? Who holds the responsibility for accountability, for standards? and for oversight of service provision. At the moment, there seems to be a bit of a standoff. The government, the state government, to some extent, is moving away from having that responsibility in the delivery of mental health services. We're not yet sure of what the responsibility is under NDIS, and yet we have this enormous question about what happens to people who fall into that, um, that emerging gap. The government did, has indicated that they see a much stronger role for the broader mainstream community sector to step in and meet the needs of vulnerable and disadvantaged people. But we have not yet seen really a strategy or any clear indication of how that's going to work. And we have real concerns <coughs> that, that, that it's going to be able to do it, but certainly real concerns about whether it's going to have that capacity in time to meet the needs of people. So for Vic Servant, I think for the whole um, community sector in Victoria, and really beyond Victoria, because I think it's an issue that has to be taken up in other states in conversations with their governments, at the national level in conversations with the Commonwealth Government and other key um, departments and stakeholders, is that we need to talk about what do we want in terms of a, of a mental health system? What does that system look like? We think that NDIS really should be seen as only one component of a much bigger mental health system. I mean, it stands to reason. I think we all believe that and we understand it. But we think that, in fact, that NDIS not only will it only meet the needs of a small um, percentage of the people with mental illness, it's quite likely that it won't meet all the needs, all the mental health needs of the people who are deemed eligible for NDIS. So where do those people go for those additional support needs that they need outside um, mental health uh, NDIS? We believe that there's real need for engagement with providers and consumers and families in the transition and in the scheme design process. That has been really lacking. Um, and as we transition into a much broader implementation process, there needs to be those conversations happening. And we're quite concerned that um, as the recommissioning process showed us in Victoria, that we need much, an approach that is about much more than just procurement of services. There needs to be, um, uh, you know, there needs to be partnership in developing services. There needs to be a sense of that it's um, not just 
buying a service from a third party to deliver to someone who has a need. There is a much greater, um, you know, I guess, philosophical underpinning to how we deliver services to people who have those needs. So we know that um, at the moment, the NDIS is not a complete story. We know that it's not even the end of the story. There is a lot of work to be done to build NDIS and to make it work. But in Victoria, we've got a lot of work to do to have a complete mental health system that complements NDIS and that enables people living in Victoria with mental illness to be able to recover and to have contributing life. I think that's all. Cool. Thank you.